In the annals of modern urban legends, few stories have captivated the public's imagination quite like that of the crying boy painting. A seemingly innocent piece of art became notorious in the 1980s when reports emerged that it was linked to a series of devastating house fires across the United Kingdom. The fires would consume everything in their path, everything that is, except for the crying boy painting itself. The legend of the crying boy spread like wildfire, igniting fears, speculation, and controversy. Was it cursed, or was it all just a tragic coincidence? Today we delve deep into the mystery of the crying boy, uncovering the history, the events that fueled its infamous reputation, and the psychological impact of the curse. The Crying Boy painting was the work of Italian artist Bruno Amadio, who is better known by his pseudonym, Giovanni Bragolin. Born in Venice in 1911, Bragolin was a painter whose work largely focused on religious themes and portraits. However, in the 1950s, he began producing a series of paintings that would come to define his legacy, paintings of weeping children. The series, often referred to as The Crying Boys, depicted children with large, sorrowful eyes and tears streaming down their cheeks. These paintings were mass-produced and sold across Europe, with particular popularity in the UK. The images of these tear-streaked children struck a chord with many, leading to widespread distribution. But why were these paintings so popular? Some believe the appeal lay in the sentimentality of the images, a reminder of the post-war era's hardships and the innocence lost in the process. Others suggest that the paintings evoked a sense of empathy or a desire to protect the vulnerable. Whatever the reason, by the 1960s, these paintings were a common sight in homes across Britain. But while the paintings may have been intended to evoke sympathy, they would soon become associated with something much darker. The stage was set for the emergence of one of the most infamous curses of the modern era. And it all began with a single fire, or so the story goes. The first reported incident linking the crying boy painting to a house fire occurred in 1985 in Rotherham, South Yorkshire. It was an unremarkable night until the peace was shattered by the sound of crackling flames and the smell of smoke. A house, home to the Hall family, was engulfed in fire. Firefighters arrived quickly, but the flames had already done significant damage. As the firefighters sifted through the smoldering wreckage, they discovered something strange. Amid the blackened ruins, a single object remained untouched, a painting of a young boy crying. The Hall family, devastated by the loss of their home, were left with questions and suspicions. How had this painting survived unscathed? The story quickly spread through the community with whispers of a curse attached to the crying boy painting. But this was only the beginning. In the following weeks, more reports emerged. Similar fires had occurred in other parts of the UK, and in each case, a crying boy painting was found among the ruins, always intact, always untouched by the flames. The British tabloid The Sun seized on the story, running a sensational headline, Blazing Curse of the Crying Boy. The media frenzy that followed only added fuel to the fire, so to speak. As more and more people became aware of the supposed curse, a wave of paranoia swept across the nation. Some homeowners who owned the painting reported feeling uneasy, as if the boy's sorrowful gaze was watching them. Others claimed to have experienced strange occurrences, flickering lights, cold drafts, and a sense of impending doom. But the fires weren't over, not by a long shot. One of the most detailed accounts of the crying boy curse comes from the Wilkinson family in Nottinghamshire. In September 1985, the Wilkinsons were enjoying a quiet evening at home when their lives were suddenly turned upside down. A fire had broken out in their living room, rapidly spreading through the house. The family managed to escape unharmed, but by the time firefighters arrived, the house was a total loss. Yet, just like in the previous cases, one item remained remarkably intact a crying boy painting that had been hanging in the living room. The Wilkinsons were shocked. They had heard about the curse, but never believed it could happen to them. After the fire, they refused to bring the painting back into their new home, fearing it might bring more bad luck. But their story wasn't unique. In other parts of the UK, similar incidents were reported. In London, the Miller family experienced a fire in their kitchen, 
only to find their crying boy painting untouched by the flames. In Liverpool, the Johnsons lost nearly everything in a blaze, but their crying boy painting survived. Firefighters who responded to these blazes began to notice the pattern. One firefighter, quoted in The Sun, claimed to have responded to multiple fires where the crying boy painting was found, always intact. Some fire stations even reportedly banned the painting, fearing the curse. As the reports multiplied, so did the fear. People who owned the painting began to dispose of them, either by burning them or throwing them away. But even those who tried to destroy the paintings reported strange occurrences. Some claimed the paintings would refuse to burn, while others said they would mysteriously reappear in their homes. And yet, the most unsettling reports were still to come. As the stories continued to spread, both the media and independent investigators sought to uncover the truth behind the crying boy curse. Was it truly a case of supernatural malevolence, or was there a more mundane explanation? One theory suggested that the curse was nothing more than the result of mass hysteria. The power of suggestion is well documented. When people believe something is cursed, they may begin to interpret ordinary events as evidence of that curse. In the case of the crying boy painting, the media coverage likely played a significant role in amplifying these fears. The fear fed on itself, with each new fire report adding to the legend. Homeowners who previously had no concerns about the painting suddenly found themselves gripped by anxiety, leading them to dispose of the paintings in a bid to escape the curse. Other experts focused on the physical properties of the paintings themselves. The crying boy prints were often produced on compressed hardboard and coated with a glossy varnish, which may have made them more resistant to fire. Additionally, the way the paintings were hung could cause them to fall face down during a fire, protecting them from direct exposure to flames. These factors combined could explain why so many crying boy paintings were found intact after fires. It was a rational explanation that offered some comfort to those who had been affected by the curse. But for others, these explanations were not enough. Paranormal investigators began to explore the possibility that the crying boy paintings were more than just art, that they might be vessels for some kind of dark energy. Some claimed that the paintings emitted strange energies, or that they were connected to the spirit of the boy depicted in the artwork. These investigators believed that the curse was real and that it could only be broken by destroying the painting or performing rituals to cleanse it. Despite the passage of time, the legend of the crying boy painting has not faded. For some, the painting remains a symbol of fear, a reminder of the power that superstition can hold over the human mind. For others, it has become a collector's item, a piece of art with a dark and mysterious history. In the digital age, the legend has taken on new life. Online forums and social media are filled with stories of people who claim to have encountered the curse or who are seeking advice on how to rid themselves of the painting. Some collectors actively seek out the crying boy, intrigued by its dark history, while others warn against bringing it into their homes. In 2010, The Sun revisited the story, organizing a mass burning of crying boy paintings. Hundreds of people sent in their paintings to be destroyed, hoping to break the curse once and for all. Yet, even after the flames died down, the legend endured. Art collectors and skeptics alike continue to debate the true nature of the crying boy painting. Is it simply a piece of art, unfairly maligned by a series of unfortunate coincidences? Or is there something more to the legend, something that defies explanation? In the years since the first reports of the crying boy curse, Countless investigations have been conducted, but the mystery remains unsolved. Is it possible that the painting is truly cursed? Or is the fear it inspires simply a reflection of our own anxieties and superstitions? For those who have lived through the curse, the question is not merely academic. The fear is real, as is the sense of unease that the painting brings. Even today, stories continue to emerge tales of strange occurrences, unexplained accidents, and a lingering sense of dread that follows those who own the painting. The mind is incredibly powerful, and belief in a curse can create a self-fulfilling prophecy. 
when we believe something is cursed, we may unconsciously act in ways that bring about the very misfortunes we fear. It's a phenomenon known as the nocebo effect, the opposite of the placebo effect, where negative expectations lead to negative outcomes. Art historian Katie Powell explains further. The Crying Boy painting is a fascinating case of how art, superstition, and media can intersect to create a powerful and enduring legend. Whether or not the painting is cursed, it has certainly left its mark on popular culture. It's a reminder that sometimes, the stories we tell, and take on a life of their own. Perhaps the true curse of the crying boy is not one of fire and destruction, but of the lingering doubt it plants in the minds of those who hear its story. The idea that an object, something so seemingly innocent, could harbor such malevolent power is both terrifying and fascinating. And in a world where the line between the rational and the supernatural is often blurred, the crying boy painting continues to hold a unique and unsettling place. So what do you think? Is the crying boy painting truly cursed, or is it just another legend born of fear and coincidence? The truth may never be fully known, but one thing is certain. The crying boy painting has captured the imagination of millions and will likely continue to do so for generations to come. As we close this chapter on the crying boy curse, remember this. Sometimes the most terrifying stories are the ones that leave us with more questions than answers. The unknown can be a powerful force, and it's that mystery, the unanswered questions, that keeps legends like the crying boy alive. Thank you for joining us on this journey into one of the most chilling tales of the 20th century. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into the world's most mysterious legends. And remember, if you ever come across a crying boy painting, think twice before bringing it into your home.